clips the freaking blue screen. <laughs> See, none of this looks real to me. Agreed, it's the faces. It's the same actress playing all these very, very different characters. There are so many people that are saying that the She-Hulk VFX are absolute garbage. What is up with this? Like, why is it that every trailer has to be like controversial or something? Thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Stick around to the end so you can find out how to get $25 off of each pair of Vessis. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of VFX Artist React. I was rolling into work today and I saw a trash pile on the side of the road and I was like, what the heck? I opened it up and there was Clint just sitting there in some trash. It's me guys, what's up? <laughs> I don't live in here, a man. house anymore. <laughs> Live in the trash can outside. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, man. I'm excited. We're gonna be looking at the Hulk. The She, the she Hulk. Hulk. Yeah. We've had a request from a lot of people to take a look at Love, Death, and Robots. She and Hulk. it's funny how it's, now that it's finally happening, you're not prepared for the one clip we're gonna watch. <laughs> well, okay, no, I'm, uh, I've been trying to get us to react to this show for a long time, and I've watched every single episode of season three, except <laughs> for the one that you guys wanna look at today. You hadn't seen it? You hadn't seen it yet, Ron? I haven't you seen it! Gone. I literally was gonna watch it last night, but I was like, oh, I'm too tired. Did you watch every episode in season three? No, I, this is the only one I watched. Look at this. So everyone has been saying, hey, the last episode of Love, Death, and Robots season three is uh, super cool and it looks 100% real. I wouldn't say it looks real. I mean, it looks incredible. Stay tuned. It looks realistic. I think there's a difference between something looking realistic and something looking real. Because a lot of this looks realistic. And exactly. a lot, and a lot and of it real. looks real. Like the tree, awesome. Plants, foliage, awesome. Oh, look at the style though. Look at the style in the plants. The little squigglies, the color squigglies. Yeah, the right wacky, there. wacky plants. There is some stylization, obviously, but. Stylization takes it away from real. For a, from a cinematic standpoint, they're trying to capture and render this image as if it was real. Okay, yes. You're talking about like from the filmmaking perspective of like everything is grounded in reality. The camera is somewhere being held by a person. There's a real lens with real focal lengths going on. But the aesthetic and the style takes it away from the real. <laughs> See, none of this looks real to me. Agreed, it's the faces. Even the armor, you know, like it looks good. It looks realistic but it doesn't look real. Well, I'm just saying these shots we're watching right now with some cool like production designers and makeup artists, you could totally accomplish. What they're utilizing the CG for is to like expand that into like the more otherworldly moments, like the water dancing mm -hmm. and like the underwater scenes and stuff like that. This looks like a matte painting to me. Nothing's moving in the foreground. It looks way more painterly. You're this right. Is, this style? Yeah. Yo, this is a painting. Like shifted style. Straight up, this is a painting. And just a little bit around him and a little bit of the brush on the other side where the body fell into, that is rendered to match this style and the lighting. But everything else in the frame is a painting. They're doing it very selectively where it's like a couple Elements of foliage will move, but the rest is still a painting. Like the foliage there in the bottom, the fern there, that's a CG fern, but I think the ferns directly behind him are painted. It's such a strange choice to shift your style just a little bit like that, but it fits. It looks beautiful. Is it called impressionistic style? Yeah, impressionistic is, I think, the right word for this. Yeah, see, like all of this so far that I'm seeing has a little bit of that impressionistic style to it that yeah. makes it less real, but is still realistic. I would even say it's more realistic than Avatar at points, you know? I think it's because the style helps it. The style absolutely helps the it. The style takes it and then just goes boom and like yeah. boots it up a little. Granted, yeah, there's a few shots that you're like, ah, I CG. My rule of thumb is that anytime your CG doesn't look perfectly real, stylize it. It mm -hmm. helps. Yeah, that's a very good point. Now you're injecting intent into your shot. It's like, I wanted it to look like this as opposed to, I wanted it to look like this other thing and I couldn't quite get there. You know what? We are going to do it. We are going to do an entirely dedicated Love, Death, and Robots episode, but we need some comments recommending which of the episodes we're going to cover because we're not going to be able to cover all of them. We need some recommendations. Leave a comment down below. Or as Sam says, do a comment. Do a comment. It's been the most requested thing so far this year, and that is the She-Hulk trailer. Because we didn't ask for this. 
So far, Bruce is looking nice. Bruce has been looking nice for years. Exactly. They've literally been working on him for over a decade. This shot looks incredible. This is probably the best looking shot in the whole trailer for me. You're definitely right. I think she's full CG'd out here. She 100% is. Yeah. Is she actually CG for the whole thing? I feel like there's a few shots in here that, that they just green her up. And no, then... she is. This shot, she's 100% CG. What about, that looks CG to me. No, it doesn't. It's like the movement or something. I believe it's real. It's like the weird like motion blur or something. Yes! It's yes. going back and forth from utterly convincing to... Shrek. Shrek. <laughs> People have been complaining about the She-Hulk VFX, and it's it kind of comes as a long journey of a lot of general hate towards the Marvel movies and how bad their CGI has been and their overuse of it, and I think it's just been a little bit of a... Uh, a misdirection of angst. I don't know how to describe it. It's like they're getting angry that Marvel keeps using all the CGI, but it's not really the CGI itself that is bad. What is up with this? Like, why is it that every trailer has to be like controversial or something? I don't know, yeah. Why right? do people get, I don't get why anyone's getting worked up about this. There are so many people that are saying that the She-Hulk VFX are absolute garbage. Now, I'm not gonna say they're wrong. So I mean, they are, but yeah, hold on, they are totally wrong. Yeah, they're totally these, wrong. Are, these aren't garbage VFX. No. <laughs> well, I don't get it. I just, it's, this is this is like this dumb internet culture of like pretending to dunk on things. It's like, just don't see it. Like you don't need to tell people it's bad. Like everyone will make their own mind up. Preach it, Sam. Preach. This is the best date I've had in a while. Oh, this looks great. This looks great. Yeah, I think this looks great okay. for being 100% CGI. Most of the shots in this trailer look fantastic, and this being one of them. Obviously, it's a close-up, so it needs to hit, right? You can't punch in on a janky shot. So. But, like, what is triggering their minds to be like, this is garbage? I think I've kind of identified why there's an issue. First off, people were reacting to the YouTube trailer, which was compressed. Because of the compression that they exported it out as, and then uploaded it to YouTube, that smoothed out all of those details, so you end up with a very, like, sort of rubbery, smooth green look. This shot, you can see it right away. Typically, in pop culture, women's faces are very, like, smooth, you know? Comparing her to, say, Bruce Banner, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, there's so much detail there that we can see that compression just will not be able to remove. I recognize beard, crow's feet, wrinkles on the forehead, the way his mouth is scrunched and these wrinkles here. He's got freaking grizzly beard stubble going on. He's got wrinkles all around his face. You don't have stubble on women, which is a detail thing that you can simulate to kind of help make something have more detail. He doesn't sit in the uncanny valley for us. One, because he doesn't look that much like a human. His face is square. He's just freaking hulked out Chad up in here. And two, we're just so used to it at this point that it doesn't trigger our senses the same way that She-Hulk is doing. I just want to be a normal, anonymous lawyer. That shot right here. This is the shot that I think most people have been reacting negatively to. Yes. There so, is some smoothness going on, but it's also the animation of the face. It feels the uncanny valley. It's like gummy and like. Yeah. Well, they're setting out to do one of the hardest things ever, and let's make a CG person. So two or three shots aren't like flawlessly, perfectly convincing. Yeah. Over the course of a series, once you start watching it, you watch the show for five minutes, and then suddenly you just start taking the character at face value. And even if a shot isn't as perfect as the other shots, it's like you stop caring pretty quickly because you're not sitting there rating every shot in this series anymore. You're just, you're enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. So. Because, uh, granted, the story will be good, and you'll com the characters will be compelling, and you'll be focused on that. I think it's the expectation that Marvel's at the top, and anything less than perfect is unacceptable. That's the best summary here. They've just outdone themselves time and time again. The bar is so high, they have to reach this almost unattainable bar, yet they achieve it every time. And if it's just 2% below the bar, it's like... Blah, blah, blah. It seems like this... The trailer is a really good segue for some other cool VFX with that same actress. Yeah, this whole video is honestly just a Tatiana Maslany appreciation video. Have you noticed anything notable about this scene? It's, it's strange. They're, they're, they're dancing. It's one actress. And it's the same actress playing all these very, very different characters. And oh. every single character here is such a different person, and I buy it 100%, and yet they interact with each other. Let's follow the guy who's grinding, all right? Yeah. I want to watch all the interactions he makes with the scene, and then we can judge what's really on set while he's doing it. So he was almost interacting with her, but he steps around that one who just stood up. All right. He moves the CG table. It's not a CG table. <laughs> Definitely CG table. <laughs> no touch. 
Okay. Kind of, oh, blocked touch. That's oh, but they are touching. So he interacts with her, but he dodged probably like a tennis ball or something earlier. That shot's actually much less complicated than it appears to be. He is the anchor to the entire scene. He's the thing that is able to interact with multiple versions of her. Okay. So notice how he goes off frame and then comes back in frame. Every time he goes off frame, it's a different shot. A shot like that requires so much coordination. They had bits of the ground taped out and choreographed ahead of time. So everything about that dance scene was so meticulously choreographed. Wow. The placement, the timing of where they're dancing. It seems like they're just kind of casually dancing, but they are very carefully hitting multiple marks. So they don't pass through each other. So they do not pass through each other, exactly. And the second thing is that they also have multiple body doubles that look very good. If you cannot see the face, if you're viewing it from slightly behind, you can't tell that it's not actually her. And so they're getting away with a lot of these shots by basically just doing that. Yeah. But for the big wide shot where the camera's moving through the room, it is just her in every shot. And they're having to do multiple different takes through the entire scene of her dancing so that they can stitch it all together after the fact. That is a classic clone type shot. CG that table. table that he's moving, it's not a CG table. It's it looks, a real table. Look, you can tell. The context shadow <laughs> is garbage. No, but like literally look at the funky shadows on the feet. They look like these little triangles. Yeah. They were just like, dude, we gotta end this shadow somewhere. <laughs> The table is real. He's physically moving it off, but I think they rotoscoped out the table and didn't take any of the ground yeah. and shadows with it. So and so they had to manually add back in the shadow and they, it was literally just a big circle underneath a square So it was table. a CG floor. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know. Actually, <laughs> small tidbit on this. They actually, what they did in the compositing was they brought an image of a potato in and they turned it 3D, flattened it below the table, <laughs> uh, set the color just to pure black, feathered it, yeah. tracked it to the table. So you close it. I think you're right. Yeah. It's a potato. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's faster to bring it in like a picture of a potato than yeah, it's, like it's, draw a circle usually. Sometimes, sometimes. sometimes with that plug-in, with the plug-in, it's good. Okay, so I don't know this actress well enough to know that this is the same person. It just looks like a fight scene between two people, uh -huh. which is probably a good thing. The show works so well because you forget it's the same actress playing all these different characters. You're just, you're seeing characters and forget that it's the same person. <laughs> Be able to do that arm over the foot. That took hours, I'd imagine. So to be clear, this show has zero CGI for this effect. There's visual effects happening, but no CGI. Like this is yeah. all real footage and blocking and choreography and rehearsal and just really, really good timing and performance. Tons yeah. of rotoscoping. Wait a second. So they filmed this with a double. Yeah. And then they had to take out the double and put the other actress in. And match up her wow, leg. Wow, far more difficult. That foot is coming from, so where is the foot coming from? It could be an asset collection. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I think what we're seeing is a Frankenstein image of her leg using elements from the body double and elements from Tatiana Maslany. Watch her leg. As the transition happens, her leg changes, but her body doesn't. Yeah, 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 100%. And so that is a different leg there, and it could be from the body double, it could be from a different take. My theory is that they did two takes with the actress switching roles, and in one take, she rolls over, and the foot's under the left armpit, and in another take, the foot's under the right armpit. And so instantly, we have blocking that doesn't match up or in a line, so they have to go back and fix the original take to match what happened in the later take with the double. Instantly, we were like, whoa, look at that cool leg interaction. And it turns out, if we dive deeper, I think the source of why that leg interaction is there in the first place is because that's actually them having to merge two separate performances. Yeah. Like, they're both very close, but not quite. And so that, that leg ends up being the thing that actually unifies this all. I mean, whatever, okay. Maybe we're wrong. What do you think? What, how, how did they do this? And if you want to let us know, do a comment. <laughs> <laughs> do one? Just do one. Do a comment. Sorry. Hey, do a comment. Do a comment. Do a comment now. <laughs> Thankfully, everyone leaves comments. Uh, someone told us that, Matt, you are not subscribed. Matt, I think it's time you went over to that little button. Give it a click. Show your support for the YouTube channel. So, yeah, Matt, if you're still watching, you know, click that button. Hey, Matt, do it for me. Yeah, there we go. Let's simplify this. Matt, subscribe for, for Ren.
Let's expose the pit tavern. Holy jumping. Canada is a little fuzzy, eh? So this is a classic clone shot. Static camera, not moving. Shoot each actor doing a different performance on either half of the frame. <gasps> Look at his like... left hand. He clips the freaking blue screen. You're he kidding. Clips it. <laughs> ah! Holy crap. <laughs> what? Oh, what? You're right. Yeah. No, someone put like a little a mask. Ma they didn't animate There's a mask. mask. They, they, they accidentally mask. left the mask there. Huh. Dang. It's fine. We, we all make mistakes. I get it. We've been looking at this for like less than a minute. And dude, <laughs> dude, we're like the Navy SEALs. <laughs> This is like, all right, let's see this shot. Oh, errors, errors, errors. All right, and screwed up. Something screwed up there. All right. all right, boys, we're done. We're done with this show. I was literally just pointing out how this is like the simplest effect you can possibly do. Yo, I've made that error for sure. I, I've made that error too. I, I feel bad kind of dunking on it because it's an accident. That's one of those things is like someone just missed it. That's on the soup. That's on the freaking. That's called not watching right? your shot before you render it. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, I've done it. So to conclude this shot, <laughs> anyways, she is probably in one or the other other original shot and then he's acting alone in the other shot and they're just comping it together the camera's static it's very easy to do somehow they still made a mistake i i feel bad that we've now pointed this out whoever did that i i'm sorry it happens to the best of us sorry but you know as you can see there's many levels of ambition when it comes to clone shots you know are we just going to slap it on a tripod split screen are we going to get like motion controlled cameras are we going to film different plates on green screens and then track them into the shot they're so many techniques but like the, that kind of like wraps them all up everything beyond that is like jimini man at that point where it's just like full cg people don't you hate when these episodes end don't you feel like there's a little bit more well on our website if you subscribe to it we have extended cuts of these episodes so we can you know prolong that entertainment just a little bit longer give you a little more toilet time maybe you're only halfway through your cereal bowl or your giant english breakfast i thought you're gonna say halfway through something else after that toilet comment Hey, I get it. You're a parent and you finally have a few moments to get away from your kids by sitting on the toilet. Well, if you need a few more minutes, go to digital.com. This episode's longer there. Things aren't always cool, calm, and collected around the studio. <laughs> Things tend to get a little messy, but that's fine. That's why I trust Vessi, today's sponsor. So what are Vessies? Well, they're some of the most stylish and versatile sneakers I've personally ever worn. You can dress them up or dress them down, wear them all around town. The coolest thing about Vessies to me is they're made from this Dymatex material so that they keep your feet cold in the summer and warm in the winter. But also, one of my favorite things is that, well, they're 100% waterproof. <laughs> Look at that. It's like coffee never got spilt on it. And then if I put my hand oh. in there, completely dry, completely dry. And they don't smell. Antibacterial soul. Jordan, there's an ant on you. Oh, you want me to kill it? Oh, no, 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 no. Vessies are 100% vegan, which means that no animals were hurt in the making of this shoe. So none are gonna be harmed right now. How oh, little auntie. In a world full of chaos that's usually highly unpredictable, it's great to have a shoe that helps bring order and comfort into any circumstance of your life. So if you want order and you want comfort, go to vessie.com slash quarter crew so you can get $25 off of each pair of Vessies. That's vessie.com slash quarter crew. And remember, say yesy to Vessi. Hey, thank you so much for watching this episode. And thank you, Clint, for joining us again on this lovely couch. I love hearing your thoughts on all these cool clips. And as you continue on your own path, you gain more and more insights that I'm always eager to hear. Yeah, that means a lot, Sam. Uh, it's good to be back with you guys. It feels like home. It feels good. like I hadn't left. It's great to come back. I'm glad. Now Thank get out. Go, go. The door's right there. I'll Leave. take the mic off. Yo, yo we don't yeah, have, yeah, we don't have all day, dude. You gotta go. The, the recycling's right. over there, yeah. You guys, yeah. You're still down for lunch or no? Or? No, no, man, you gotta go. I'm full. Yeah. All right, you guys probably take your mic back. There's a bucket outside. You can put it in there. <laughs> <laughs>